In this video, we're going to practice making Lewis structures for different molecules and give you a few general tips as far as how to solve these problems, how to construct Lewis structures for any molecule. So in the previous video, we looked at a very simple general Lewis structure for the Cl2 molecule, which just includes two chlorine atoms, each sharing a single electron to form the bond between the two. All right. So I noted that a Lewis structure, a proper Lewis structure, has a dash to denote or dashes to denote the bonds in the molecule and it accounts for all of the lone pair electrons right so these are all of the valence electrons that are in the molecule from the seven elect valence electrons on one chlorine atom and the seven valence electrons on another chlorine atom so what I want to do is go through the general strategy of how to build and construct these Lewis structures for different molecules. So in this video, we're going to go through two different examples, H2O and pH3. So first, let's start with a water molecule, H2O. So when starting these problems, the first thing you want to ask yourself is how many valence electrons are in this molecule. So really there's no, you, know, you might get stuck on some of these problems, but you should be able to start every single Lewis structure problem by asking yourself how many valence electrons are in the total molecule, right? So how many total valence electrons are in this molecule, right? So how many total valence electrons do we have? Now, considering the localized electron model, right, where we're, we're, you know, considering a molecule as a collection of individual atoms. So all you want to do to figure out the total number of valence electrons is to add up the valence electrons for each individual atom, right? So we have two hydrogens in H2O, right? So there's going to be one valence electron from one hydrogen, plus one valence electron from the other hydrogen. If you remember the valence, the electron configuration for hydrogen is just 1s1. It has that single valence electron. So this one electron is coming from one of the hydrogens. This valence electron is coming from the other hydrogen. Then we're going to have six valence electrons from the oxygen, right? So remember that the uh, valence electron configuration for oxygen, you're going to have two electrons in the 2s and you're gonna have four electrons in the 2p, right? So we're gonna have six from the valence electrons in oxygen, right? Now, if, if you don't understand how I got these numbers, you may need to go back and review electron configurations, right? So I have a video on that that I'll link here um, that you can go back and review electron configurations before you start doing this, right? So if you don't remember like, you know, 2s, 2p, 1s, all of the atomic valence orbitals for, uh, for individual atoms. Just go back and review that before you start to do these problems. Okay, so this is going to be the different contributions to the total number of valence electrons for water. And so you can see here that if we just add all of these up, we're going to have eight valence electrons total for H2O, right? So this is going to be the total valence electrons for H2O. We're going to have eight, one from one hydrogen, one from the other hydrogen, and six from the oxygen. So now that you've figured out how many total valence electrons there's going to be in the entire molecule, now you want to form a bond between all of the atoms, right? So form bond between all atoms. Right, so we're just going to form a bond between the oxygen and hydrogen here and oxygen and hydrogen here, right? So we formed a bond between all of the atoms. So this is really what you wanna do in all of these problems. Like I said, this, this, past this is where it gets kind of tricky, but um, at, for every single one of these problems, you should be able to identify how many valence electrons are there total and what's the bonding framework, right? So we have that for H2O, we've figured out the total number of valence electrons and we've formed a bond between all of the atoms in the molecule. However, we're not done, right? Because we've only accounted for four of the eight valence electrons, right? So this uh, bond is gonna signify two 
bonded electrons between oxygen and hydrogen. And the same thing for this bond, two electrons between oxygen and hydrogen. So we've only accounted for four valence electrons. So now we have to account for the other ones as lone pair electrons, right? So we have to add in the lone pairs. Right. So the rule for lone pairs. Right. So you might be asking yourself, you know, OK, I know that we have to add in lone pairs, but where am I going to put the lone pairs? Right. Do I put them on this hydrogen, the oxygen, this hydrogen? The general rule for um, for lone pair electrons is that they are going to reside on the most electronegative atom in the molecule. Right. In this case, oxygen is much more electronegative than hydrogen. So those lone pair electrons are going to be attracted to the oxygen. So when we fill in the electron pairs here, we're going to fill them in on the oxygen atom. So we add those four valence, those four um, lone pair electrons. And now we have the complete Lewis structure for the water molecule, right? So we have the oxygen atom in the center. We've got two electrons here bonded to this hydrogen, two here, and then the other four are lone pairs that reside on the oxygen atom. Okay, cool. So again, going through those steps again, we de determined how many total valence electrons we're gonna have. We formed a bond between all of the atoms in the molecule, and then we fill in the lone pairs, right? So these are the three general steps for constructing a Lewis structure. So we went from this molecular formula, H2O, to its proper Lewis structure. Okay, so let's do the same thing for pH three. Okay, so for pH three, um, let's look at what we're gonna have here. So first of all, again, we're gonna wanna determine how many total valence electrons, right? So I'll just write total valence here. Right, how many valence electrons do we have total? Okay, so we're gonna have three hydrogens here, right? So we got one plus one plus one, right? Each of these, coming from a hydrogen atom, right? So we know we got three valence electrons. Plus for phosphorus, phosphorus is going to have five valence electrons, right? So 2s2, uh, 2p3, right? So, um, so for this, we're gonna have five coming from the phosphorus atom. So that's gonna give us eight valence electrons again, right? So we have eight valence electrons, one from each hydrogen, and then five from the phosphorus. So here again, we're gonna just uh, form the bonds. Right, so we have phosphorus in the middle here, and it's gonna be bonded to each of the hydrogens. Right. OK, so again here, not done yet because we have two, four, six electrons accounted for and we have eight valence electrons total. So this Lewis structure is not yet complete. Um, we have to determine where the lone pairs are going to go. And again, we determine that based on electronegativity. Phosphorus is more electronegative than hydrogen. So those lone pairs are going to be attached to the phosphorus atom. Right. So we put those uh, lone pairs on the phosphorus. So this completes the Lewis structure. Phosphorus has a full octet. Right. And that completes our Lewis structure. So now you might be wondering why for hydrogen. Right. In its case, we don't have eight electrons around hydrogen. Right. We have eight electrons around the oxygen here and around the phosphorus in this case. But we don't have eight electrons around the hydrogen. Isn't that against the octet rule? Well, no. Right. And that's why when I gave you the definition for the octet rule, um, I gave it in a very specific way. It's not always going to be eight electrons in the case of hydrogen. Right. Remember, hydrogen. Only has that one S orbital available. Right. So it's going to have one electron in the one S orbital. So in order for it to fill its valence shell. Right. It only needs one more electron. It just needs to share one more electron and then it's going to fill that 1s valent shell, right? Now for phosphorus and oxygen, it has s and p shells to fill. 
But for hydrogen, it just needs one more electron to fill that 1s and then it's good, right? So in both of these cases, we have these hydrogens that just need to get involved in one bond so that it can gain one more electron to fill its valence shell. Whereas for oxygen and phosphorus, they have to make multiple bonds in order to fill their valence shell. For the case of oxygen, it needed two. And for the case of phosphorus, it needed three, right? So, so keep that in mind when thinking about these Lewis structures. For hydrogen, it's only going to need that one electron. So we've already kind of encountered our first exception to the octet rule. We'll encounter more, and I'll explain in each of those cases. Uh, but these were two, a little bit more involved than Cl2, but these were still two fairly straightforward examples of constructing Lewis structures. In the next video, we'll look at two examples that are a little bit more involved uh, for creating Lewis structures.